Today we're going to be compression testing the engine on my wife's 2011 Nissan Altima. For those of you who don't know, compression testing basically tests the health of your engine. It's something that you can't get from a check engine light or an error code. What it's checking is how much compression each cylinder is able to generate based on how good a seal that the piston rings have against the cylinder walls. You want all numbers to be at least over 120 pounds, closer to 150 or 160 pounds depending on the engine. More high performance engines are gonna have a higher numbers and lesser performance engines are gonna have a little bit lower numbers even when they're brand new. If you have low numbers or it's something extremely low, like even down to zero. You've got some serious problems, but it's a good way of diagnosing those problems. So you can know if you have a blown head gasket or if you have just ruined cylinder walls and destroyed piston rings, you can really diagnose a lot with this. And it's a very simple process. So all you have to do is remove each of the spark plugs. So it'd be a great time to change your plugs or to do this while you're already changing your plugs. Pull all four spark plugs out and pull a fuse for the fuel pump because you're going to be turning the engine over but you do not want it to start. So find a fuse for your fuel pump, go ahead pull that out, get all your spark plugs out which is where we're at now and you're going to need a compression gauge which is what I have here. I got it from Amazon, it was like 20 bucks, super cheap. It's a very simple tool, it doesn't have to be that complicated. It came with a few different adapters for different spark plugs. Just match the adapter up to whatever spark plug you pull out of the engine and you're going to thread that in hand tight. You're going to watch me do it in the video hand tight. You just need to spin the hose. It doesn't have to be twisted down real tight. It's not sealing through compression, it's sealing with a rubber gasket. The way we're going to do this is we're going to thread it into each one of the spark plug holes. We're going to have the engine turn over five times per cylinder and then we're going to write down whatever the highest reading we saw on that gauge it should come up evenly with each compression stroke and after those compression strokes it should settle at the top number so we're going to run through all four cylinders and we're going to see our numbers the qr 25 de which is what's in this car is notorious for having problems with the catalytic converter that's right off of the exhaust manifold breaking up and then ruining cylinder walls so i'm just going to double check on my wife's motor make sure everything's doing okay regardless of what numbers we get i'm going to try this restore engine restoration and lubricant they have a guarantee on the back that claims increased compression or my money back on any engine over 50,000 miles, which this car has 125,000 on it. So I'm going to put that in there, run it through the engine for a little while, and then do this test again. If I get higher numbers, perfect. I'll put it in all of my cars. If I don't get higher numbers, then I'll get my money back. So either way I win, and it'll save you guys the time and headache of having to do this test yourself. So let's get started. We're going to go ahead and thread this into the first hole. And I'm going to have my wife turn the engine over while I'm reading the gauge. Well, the good news is we got great numbers. The lowest at 155, highest at 165. Very consistent all the way across the board. You don't want any two numbers to be more than 15% apart. Other than that, it's gonna cause a problem with how the engine's gonna run. It's gonna cause a misfire. And as you can see on our little board here, I had it set up for a dry and a wet test. The dry test is where exactly what I described you're screwing in the gauge, you're running the engine, you're checking the compression. Wet is more specifically for if you're trying to get an engine started that has not run for a long time. Put a little bit, you know, two or three drops of oil in there. Lube everything up to kind of help that compression ratio. Help those piston rings seal against the cylinder wall. But we don't have to do that. We got great numbers from the start. This engine runs every day, so we do not have to do it on this engine. But if you're trying to get a junkyard engine running, that's what you're going to have to do to check to see if it's a good engine. So now that we're done, what I'm gonna do is go ahead, put everything back together, put just engine restoration in there. It's the six cylinder bottle, so it has more than I need, so don't put the whole bottle in. I didn't see a four cylinder bottle at my local store. I have an eight cylinder bottle as well. So I'll go ahead and put this in. We'll let the car run for a week, see how it does, and then we'll come back and do this test one week from now. 
So here we are one week later. The car's done approximately 200 to 250 miles in that time. I would say that is more than enough time for this product to take effect of whatever effect it's going to have, good, bad, or indifferent. So we're gonna go through, check all the cylinders again. I have let the car cool down for the same amount of time as last time. So my wife drove home, parked the car. We let it sit for about the same amount of time as last time, took all the plugs out, and we're gonna test it again. So it should be a fair apples to apples comparison. So let's run through the test and we'll see what numbers we get. You can see here, here are our four results from the original test. We have an increase of 10 PSI on three of the cylinders and five on the one with the highest rating to begin with, telling me this is probably the healthiest cylinder. These just needed a little bit more help, especially cylinder number three. These aren't exact numbers. I was trying to follow the needle as best I could, but I mean, it's not a digital gauge. I'm reading an analog gauge. I'm just kind of where I can see the needle, but we're getting an approximate 170 all the way across 165 on cylinder number three. But these are great numbers, very consistent. And we did see a slight improvement, even if it was five PSI across the board, that's still significant from just having something out of a bottle. It's, I didn't go in there, I didn't do new rings. I would say this is a statistically significant result. I'm gonna recheck this in six months, so around January, sometime in there, we'll recheck this, see if this has lasted or if this is just kind of a band-aid. From the other videos I've seen of people doing this test, it seems like it dates. So whatever it does, it's just helping the rings to reseat to the cylinder walls, kind of smoothing out any imperfections. How it does that, I have no idea, but we have better numbers. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments below. Hit that subscribe button and I will see you guys next week.